Hey, y'all. It's Kendall. Um, coming to you <laughs> from quarantine in Shanghai, China. This is my, oh my God, I don't even know what day it is. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third. This is my fifth day um, of quarantine. Um, and of course, this is my taping of my quarantine chronicles. Um, yeah, so you know that I own Aspire Counseling and Wellness Center, a private therapy practice in Texas. Um, but I'm also a professional school counselor and this year, I am one of the senior social emotional counselors at Dulwich College, Beijing in Beijing, China. So if you haven't been like following the news and things, um, in order for individuals to return to China, they require you to go through a process. And so that was kind of like where the idea of Quarantine Chronicles was birthed. And obviously I completed the process, which is, is this. Um, obviously you have a job, you have to be invited by your school back to Beijing. It was either, I think your school, the company that you work for or family reunification. You couldn't just come just to come travel like normally, right? Um, so I received what they call the PU letter from my school and Honestly, I was in the States for eight months. I came home to visit my family for Chinese New Year, which is in, which was in um, the end of like, I came the end of January, I suppose to leave February, beginning of February. But then the coronavirus popped off in the US, literally all over the world. And what was supposed to be a two week stay turned into an almost nine month um, extended stay. <laughs> Very interesting to say the least, but lots of great milestones um, happened during that extended time that I had to experience in the US. I was able to be present for my niece's birth. Uh, I was able to be there for my niece, my other niece to turn three. I turned 39 with my family. Um, and I've been able to create a lot. Um, for my practice and I've been able to connect with some really good people kind of to further this mental health thing. So although it's been a very trying almost nine months, it's been a very productive nine months. So I'm just choosing to see it that way, right? <laughs> but you know, back to quarantine. So get your PU letter, then they book, you no, know, then you have to, I had to reapply for a new visa. Um, and that took a few weeks, but once that's done, then I had to um, get a flight booked for, my flight was booked for October the, October the 9th, which came very quickly. Um, but then I had to get a COVID test, which was nerve wracking, <laughs> at least in my head. But that was the challenging thing is like everywhere else in the world, people could get these rapid tests they, they get the results back in hours, if not a day. In the U.S., the time, at least where I live, the time frame was like a three to five day turnaround. And that just caused me a lot of anxiety because in order to board the plane, you have to have the health um, declaration signed by the Chinese consulate uh, stamp providing you permission to get on board. And you had to have that within a 72 hour window uh, of boarding your flight. So it was just a lot of back and forth. So I took the the free test that my city offers, that Huntsville offers, thank God, because a lot of people need that. Um, but it was three business, three to five business days, and I took it on a Sunday. So I was like, oh my God, that was so nerve wracking. I needed it on the 6th, which was like a Tuesday, but I wound up getting it on a Wednesday, which worked out anyway. But, you know, in my impatience, um, when I called to check in on my results, one of the ladies at the hospital was like, well, I do know of a place where you can get a rapid test. So paid the $100, drove down to, um, where was that? Like Magnolia area to a nice facility, took the test, which was actually a nose swab test. It hurt. <laughs> the first test, they just swabbed my little nostrils. That was fine. 
Um, they, but the second test, they swabbed my nose. I'm thinking that it was gonna be a PCR test, but it wasn't. It was an antigen test. And that's, the, that's not the test that um, the consulate allowed. You have to have the PCR test, which had to go to a lab. But you know, lo and behold, the Lord worked it out. I received the result that next morning, went to the hospital, get them, boom, board my plane in three days. And then here I am in quarantine. Um, it was, it's been a to-do. Like the flight was great, Delta was great, masks were worn. I've just been having this anxiety regarding masks and things. Like people aren't, they don't trip in China about the mask. Like it's, there's like a social responsibility. You know, it's crazy in the US. But all throughout this whole process, I've been really having to, I have a shirt that says, reset your mindset. Here, I have the sticker on my computer. Reset your mindset that I sell, right? And I've really been having to do a whole lot of mindset resetting <laughs> um, over the last few months. Some days I've done, done okay, most days I haven't. But um, on the flight here, we, it was, it was a really good flight. Like we left um, uh, IA Bush Intercontinental at like 12, to a uh, two hour flight to Detroit, four hour layover in Detroit. Then we flew to Seoul, uh, South Korea, supposed to be a 30 minute like um, um, shift change of the stewardess, of the flight attendants. That turned into two hours because there was technical difficulties. They had an electrical issue, which I'm glad they sorted. But then we flew the rest of the time uh, to, I think of the next two hours, to Shanghai. Got here. That process was arduous. We had to go through checkpoints. I had to have another COVID test where they swabbed both of my nostrils. Ooh. Um, just felt like they were like invading my brain. Um, but the, as I reset my mindset, that's the theme of this quarantine chronicle is I would rather go through the rigmarole and all of this just to know that I'm safe, right? Um, because I don't want to harm anyone else. I don't want to be harmed. I don't want to harm anyone else. You know, I want to get through this process as expeditiously as possible, um, and safely and healthy in as, in as healthy a manner as possible. Um, so... <laughs> Here I am, I've been praying, Lord, please let me get a good hotel, a nice hotel. I, if I'm gonna have to be here for two weeks by myself, please let the accommodations be something that I can stomach. No, not that I can stomach, that I'm gonna like. Um, I'm used to staying in nice hotels when I travel. Um, and so on the way here, um, met, connected with some really nice people. Um, it's interesting when you, with, when you connect with people as you travel abroad, you listen to the different stories, the different experiences, and that's really one of the things that I love about living, you know, as an expat, an expatriate, an, a United States citizen living in another country. Um, you get to really encounter and meet and engage with a, for a whole sleuth of different people, um, different mindset, different walks of life, and it just enriches your life. Um, but so I'm in this hotel room, which is actually a nice room, but it was really dirty. It was dusty, like they didn't clean it. And needless to say, I haven't eaten breakfast um, since I've been here. I'm not the biggest fan of Chinese food. I love food, but, um, and I have dietary restrictions and it's just been really a back and forth with some of the hotel management as far as like what I can eat, what I can't, can you provide this? And I'm not able to order food from outside of, uh, the hotel, I can order fruit, which I need to figure out how to do it on this app called Meituan. But resetting my mindset, it's like, well, you practice intermittent fasting. <laughs> so now you just have to do it because you don't eat the food that they're serving you for breakfast. So I asked for a Western breakfast and um, they've been sending me every morning loaves of white bread and milk. Like I can't drink milk. I'm lactose intolerant. I drink coconut milk. So it's just, it's been frustrating. I can't lie, but, um, it's just really been an exercise in how are you going to take what you have that you cannot control and how will you make it work for you? So I've been drinking a whole lot of water, 
didn't have water when I got here. I had to clean up the hotel room. I had to do a whole lot of stuff that honestly I'm paying that I shouldn't have to do, but I did it. Because if I wanted my accommodations to be um, comfortable, then I just got to do what I got to do, right? It's what Radical acceptance is literally the name of the game for the last nine months. Radical acceptance. And do what you can. Um, yeah, so all that's happening. And here we are. Um, this is my fifth day in quarantine. And like I'm getting over jet lag. I'm, I'm over the hump. I'm not fully there. Uh, my body really shuts down around 3.45 and I sleep for a few, like four, five or six hours. Um, wake up, go back to sleep, wake up at midnight and I'm up to like five, <laughs> right? But one of the good things, resetting my mindset, is that I get to talk to my family. Uh, I was able to talk to my sister this morning, my nieces, my brother-in-law, my mom. Um, after the first day of early voting in Texas, hey, if you have not voted... Please make a plan to vote. I'm really probably going to get people to side eye if you don't vote, right? No, well, yeah, a little bit of judgment. Please vote. Like, I, our lives literally hang in the balance. That's one of the things I made sure I did before I left the United States was I voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and straight down ballot dem Democratic ticket in, in Texas. It's time for a change. And I think that with everyone, you know, we're having these coalitions be built and, you know, people are being awakened and, you know, joining the process. I think things are really going to change and I hope for the better. Um, which brings me to kind of like the theme of like what I want this quarantine to be about. Um <laughs> Historically, I'm not one that likes to spend a whole lot of time alone, right? I'm very extroverted. I think as I've gotten older and wiser, I've become more of an introverted extrovert where I love being around good people, right? People that bring out the best in me, people with good energy, but there are just times when I need to be by myself to re-energize, just to kind of refocus. And I just had this huge plan for what I was going to do in quarantine. And my body is like, uh, no, <laughs> you're going to rest. You're going to just relax. You're going to take it easy. And then when you're ready, which I think I'm getting ready, you know, you do the things that you plan to do. My quarantine chronicles. Um, I'm going to, you know, do my best to write some of my book, you know, do this, start this course that I want to do, this certification course, work on my business. Um, I just don't want to be idle. And so I'm working on a blog right now and an email to my email list that you know is entitled how are you going to best your quarantine phase <laughs> and what is a quarantine phase what do you think like what does a quarantine phase sound like to you right we know that quarantine isn't you don't go anywhere you please right quarantine is literally you are shut down you can't go anywhere you are alone with yourself and what do you do right? What do you do with that solitude, that forced solitude that you cannot escape? And so when I think of besting my quarantine phase, right now I'm technically in a quarantine phase, but I feel as if I've undergone multiple quarantine phases in my life leading up to these 39 years in this earth. And all of them have not been <laughs> good. Um, so it's kind of like at this phase, what am I going to do with this quarantine phase? I'm trying to map out, you know, make a plan for what I would like to see happen during this time and do what I can, right? Making sure that I take care of my physical health. You know, I'm doing my push-ups. I'm doing my burpees. I hate burpees. Um, I have my jump rope. Um, I was hoping for carpeted floors, but I'm honestly glad that they aren't carpeted because that holds a lot of dust and I'm allergic to all that. So the nice little wooden floors are easy for me to do my jump roping, my lunges, my squats, all that good stuff. So I'm trying to do that for at least 30 minutes a day. Um, I've been reading I, and I'm watching Netflix. I'm not even going to lie. I have to, right? Um, reading um my latest 
book that I'm actually almost done with is the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone, and this is Children of Virtue and Vengeance. It's really good. Tony Adeyemi, I suggest you get it. Um, so reading, again, I said, you know, engaging in these, um, in this certification course that I'm doing, but I'm, I'm also having to be mindful. So I'm working on, I'm doing more meditation. I use an app called Headspace. Um, and there's another one called Insight Timer, but I'm doing a lot of writing as well. Like writing is meditative for me. So I'm just doing things that are gonna help me grow in these areas that sometimes I feel very stuck in. That, and I was listening to my, my sister said something the other day, just you gotta take it easy and just listen to yourself. When you're ready, you'll get it done. And one of the biggest things for me is being easy with myself, right? Self-compassion. Uh, love and kindness, um, not trying to push myself to do things to fulfill an arbitrary metric or um, timeline that I put on myself because I think that's what I'm supposed to do in this time, right? Um, so not trying to force myself to do, just trying to, in, and instead allowing myself to be and be okay with that. Right, that's not always been the comfortable thing, um, but just really trusting myself, giving myself what it is that I need, utilizing this quarantine phase to just grow and prepare myself for when I am reintroduced to the world, hoping that I am a better version of me um, and that I am a healthier, more positive, more optimistic version of myself. Um, and a more authentic version of myself. And that doesn't mean that who I am right now isn't authentic, it is. But as I become more comfortable with who I am, what I'm putting out into the world, and the time frame that it's happening, not being so hung up on, I need to have such and such at this time, because I'm very much of that mindset, and it's caused me a lot of anxiety, but as the days go by and the years go by, I'm slowly letting life unfold the way that the Lord has for it to right um and i think that's one of the biggest lessons that i can share during this quarantine chronicle is let life unfold as you work um as opposed to having a rigid mindset of what it's supposed to look like you know you work toward the goal that you have you set the goal you be ambitious you do your vision board you set your you know, your, your, your metrics for what you want things to do, but you also allow yourself to roll with what life offers you. Because sometimes it's much better than what you have planned in your head. I honestly can say that it has been for myself. So, um, and I'll end on this, what turned into a two, what was supposed to be a two week vacation turned into an almost nine month extended stay, unexpected, but one of the best things that could have happened, not only for myself, but for my family. Again, there was so much that was birthed out of the time. I know that it was nothing but the Lord's protection and I'm grateful. So that's my gratitude right now is hindsight is definitely 2020. Um, I'm honestly glad for this quarantine. I didn't think I would be saying that, but I'm glad for the opportunity to be still right and to take life as it comes um and to know that i'm still ambitious i still have goals i still have dreams that i'm definitely going to accomplish and surpass but knowing that being present focused is the most important thing because this is what i can control right um so i ask you as you're watching this what are you going to do during your quarantine phase? And that could be literal or physical, you know, or metaphorical. Um, if you think of different quarantine phases that you've had in your life, how did they turn out? How were you? How did you take it? How did you come out on the other side? And as you go into quarantine phases in your life, because you will, how would you like that to be different, right? Um, I love to engage with people. So if you're watching this on my YouTube channel or on Facebook, <laughs> please 
um, send me a message, follow me, subscribe to my um, YouTube channel, subscribe to my website where you get lots of good information. I send out a bi-weekly email. I blog once a, once a week. Um, I send out lots of good things. I have some programs coming down the pike that I love to share. You know, follow me on Instagram, aspire underscore counseling well. I put out content on there. Uh, on Facebook, my business page, Aspire Counseling Wellness Center. I put out content there as well. So there's so many ways you can follow me. Um, so again, I'm a licensed therapist. I'm a professional school counselor. I'm an educated wellness coach. I definitely want to give to educators of all levels, anyone that works within a school system that supports children. Um, I am an advocate for you. Um, I've worked in education for the last 13 years. Um, never thought I'd be in this career, but I'm definitely grateful that I am because it's helped to push me into the areas that I'm meant to be in. So um, I definitely want to spend a lot of my professional time doing what I can to support the educator community. So we do great work, right? And it's not easy work. So yeah, please follow me, leave a comment, you know, send me an email, let me know what you think and share with me how you are going to best your quarantine season. And on that note, I'm going to sign off. Um, I'm Kendall your lovely traveling therapist, your international therapist, <laughs> heading back to Beijing soon. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. And thank you for watching the second episode of Quarantine Chronicles. And make sure you vote. Obviously, you see who I'm voting for. Vote, 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 vote early. Bring people with you. Be a poll worker if you can. Just make sure you vote. We have the power to make a change. Y'all have a good one. And as I always say, make sure you prioritize your mental health today. See y'all later. And I hope you do well during your quarantine phase. Bye.